Welcome into War Chant TV alongside the managing editor of WarChant.com. He is Ira Chauffel. My name is Tom Lang. And today we're getting into the dollars and cents of it all with the NIL legislation in the state of Florida. But before we get going, remember, everybody, hit the like button underneath this video if you have not done so already. It helps us find more folks who are looking for great coverage on Florida State Athletics and in this case, I guess, Florida legislation. And also hit the subscribe button right next to the like button right there if you have not joined us at WarChant TV already. We cover Florida State athletics head to toe. We're the best in the business, and we would appreciate your support. And every time you take one of those steps, we find more Florida State fans who are looking for great coverage. We appreciate your support, everybody. Thanks for helping us out at WarChant TV. So today's topic, Ira, we have an article, a partner article on the site. Uh, it's about Florida legislation as it pertains to the NIL, name, image, and likeness. And last year... Around the summertime, Florida State, uh, the state of Florida was beating its chest because they looked to be uh, the trailblazers on mm -hmm. the NIL front. But what seemed to be kind of like a key that opens a door ended up being a handcuff. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. You know, the way it really worked out was, uh, you know, uh, a lot of the universities around the country were asking the NCAA to do something to, to open up the doors to NIL so that college athletes could profit from their name, image and likeness. And the NCAA just would not do it. They just would not come off of it and saying that you know they, they believed in amateurism, they didn't feel like the athletes should be compensated. So it just kind of dragged on. So lawmakers in Florida, California, and a couple other states went ahead and said, you know what, we're going to create laws and force your hand. And so Florida did it. And you know, if you remember last, I think it was last March, uh, Governor DeSantis came and had a press conference over at FSU and inside the indoor practice facility and uh, you know kind of celebrated the fact that Florida was at the forefront of this and they wanted to make sure athletes could get paid, get compensated for, for their name and image of likeness, do promotional opportunities, maybe do ads and commercials, things like that. And they were at the forefront of it. But what happened at the, in, in the summer was the NCAA basically said, look, we can't, you know, we have all these states with rules. Okay, fine. You can have your NIL deals. They back down, they, they open the door to that. The problem was in, in, their, in their legislation, they said, okay, you can do it but you have to abide by your state guidelines. If you don't have a state law, then you can kind of do whatever you want. I mean, there are some stipulations, but but it's very loosely uh, interpreted. But if you have state guidelines, you have to follow those. Well, in the state of Florida, one of the parts of the rule was because they didn't want to run afoul of the NCAA, the state uh, employees, like, for example, Florida State, Mike Norvell, the coaching staff, the the boosters, they, can't, they couldn't be part of the deal. They could... The athletes could strike their own deals, but the state coaches, employees couldn't be part of the deal. Well, in these states that didn't have an NIL deal, they didn't have that stipulation. So now, because Florida and, and a couple other states went ahead and did their laws, and Florida particularly had that stipulation, because they were trying to do the right thing, right. it ended up hurting the state schools because once the NCAA backed down and made it all wide open, now those other states could work with directly with the players and the businesses on, on these NIL deals. Whereas at Florida state or UF or Miami or other schools around the state, the, the, if businesses came to the school and said, Hey, we want an NIL deal with this player or all your players, the school had to just say, you know, you need to go find them and talk to them. The state, the school couldn't be a part of any of those deals. And it ended up hurting them in recruiting. Uh, as we all saw in December, um, you know, some of these states were able to do, a little bit more than uh, the state schools were. So, so these policies that that uh, that I wrote about uh, that they're the Florida legislature is working on right now would help rectify that issue. Yeah, Ira. You know, thankfully we're not this channel, this type of channel. But there are times when there is blame to go around for for you know a politician, right? You know, where you get mad at somebody and say it's your fault. In this case, as you're saying, it's nobody's fault. Florida tried to be at the forefront and was at the forefront, and maybe was the, the catalyst that put into motion an easier situation for other states. So that, that's what it sounds like to me is, in a way, they created a loophole for themselves. But if they had not taken that step, then maybe nobody else, maybe not any of these other states would have been able to benefit from NIL. And it's just right. about closing up that loophole and making sure that Florida is on even footing. Is that an accurate summary of what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, if they could have gone back in time and, and left that part out about uh, the, the employees, the coaches couldn't be involved in it, yeah. maybe they would have. But I think that at the time, the thinking was you don't want to go so directly head to head contrary with NCAA rules right? Um, and then have NCAA issues. That's why, uh, if you remember really late in the process, 
the Florida legislature almost pulled it out. They they made an amendment to the bill mm -hmm. to push it back another year to give it more time because they were they were concerned about preventing you know an FS or a UF football team or FSU basketball team maybe for competing for a national title. If you got to the point where the NCAA said, okay, you, you did what you want to do, but now you can't compete for championships right. at the NCAA level. So there was some concern there. So Florida did what they did. You know, they were trying to be practical and trying to be pragmatic. But in the end, once the NCAA threw up their hands, it kind of screwed uh, the schools in the state of Florida. That's the proper term, I think. That's the, since we're talking legislature, I yeah, think screwed is the proper term for that. And uh, you know, and, and as I said, they're they're trying to rectify it right now during the legislative session, which started this week. Yeah, unless you're at the governor's club, and I believe that uh, there's a different word that would be used instead of uh, the official word, and it might be a little bit more, uh, you know, grainy and gritty. Uh, but you're right, I, my timeline was fuzzy there. That, you know, the enactment of the bill, I believe, was in the, the summertime, and that's when at the 11th hour it looked like maybe it was not going to be pushed through and, and was going to be held off. But you're right, it was last spring. That's indeed correct. Uh, that was at the IPF when they had that particular press conference. So, okay, um, it seems like in, in you know, cursing or, or parsing through, uh, see the, the curse word, uh, parsing through your article on the site that uh, both the House and Senate within the state of Florida have at least very similar, if not identical looking bills uh, that are being proposed on the floor that could help expedite this process and clean the whole thing up by the summer. Is is that accurate? Yeah. And the reason it's important that there are two bills, there's a, a bill in the, the identical same bill, is it kind of, it, it speeds up the process and makes it more likely that it gets passed during this legislative session. Because when, when the bills go through, they have to go through other committees. And if it just goes through one House or the Senate, then it has to go through all their committees, and then go over to the other side and have them look at it in their committees. This way, they're doing it through this. It just shows that they're streamlining it. They're trying to. And it's all, it's also important to note that Florida's, we all know Florida's legislature is, is run by the Republicans. It has been for a long time. And it's th both of these bills are put forward by Republican uh, members of those chambers. So... And we know Governor DeSantis is going to support it. So it's likely that these are going to get pushed through pretty quickly. There might be some language. I was talking to some university sources last night. There might be some language that needs to be tweaked uh, here and there throughout it. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be just rubber stamped. But it, every indication is this will get passed during this uh, legislative session. And then if the governor signs it, which he's expected to, it would go into law July 1st, which you know just would help you know, Florida State and these other schools in all sports uh, when it comes to just making their student athletes and, and the recruits coming behind them feel like, OK, if I go to school in Florida, I'm not going to be handicapped in terms of my ability to make money for my NIL. Yeah, Civics 101, you know, if you have to open it up and it, something passes in the House federally, you know, and then it goes, passes over to the Senate, you got to debate it all over again. So we're skipping that step by presenting it in, in both uh, chambers. That's that's the way to do it and to streamline it. OK, Ira, so the future of this particular uh, bill and, and let's just say it goes ahead and passes and, and this whole process is streamlined. About a year ago, it seems kind of weird. And, and that's probably why the state of Florida enacted the, the rules that they did. It, that it's all allowed. It just, it seems kind of strange that, you know, the university can work in hand in hand with an athlete, student athlete, sorry, I forgot about the student part in order to make sure that they get their money. Uh, but what does the future hold for, uh, you know, the institutions in the state of Florida you know, obviously the Seminoles are the one that we cover. Uh, but what does the future hold? What would that look like? Are, are they, you know, taking ideas from other States that didn't have these, uh, you know, these problems, these hurdles to climb and, and how would it actually look day to day uh, for Florida State moving forward if it gets through? Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, again, it's it's still kind of the wild, wild west. Uh, and this is just to try to give the schools in Florida the same opportunity that they have in other states. But, yeah, we've seen some of the deals that have been uh, put into place uh, in the state of Texas, particularly uh, where University of Texas, where have, they have these deals where all of their offensive linemen get, I think it's like a $50,000 deal with a certain business to sponsor them. Um, there's, uh, I know, you know, Texas A&M has some deals in place that they're working directly with the student athletes and the businesses to make these deals happen. And I mean, that's important. I just know from our perspective last summer, when this law went into effect, you know, our boss, Gene Williams wanted to do a deal with Devontae Love Taylor, where, where he did the, the trench talk podcast during the season with Aslan, where every Monday night he would do an interview with us and answer fans questions and interact. So we, we reached out to FSU at the time and said, hey, we want to do this deal with Devontae Love Taylor. What do we need to do? And they were like, hey, you got to figure it out. We can't be part of it. Yeah, yeah. And so 
I mean, that's that's been the problem. So there are businesses out there who maybe want to do deals with athletes, but they don't know how to reach these kids. They don't, and then then negotiate with them. So now that the school can be part of the process, we've seen it at other schools. And so the way it's played out in recruiting, you know, Florida State, what they've had to do is when, when recruits have asked, like during this past signing period, when recruits would ask, what what kind of NIL deals can I expect? All they really could do was say, well, this athlete got a deal for this. They could tell them, hey, this is what this athlete, you know, Jordan Travis has a deal where he makes this much doing this. They could inform them of that, but they couldn't tell them that they couldn't, you know, say that that's what all of our guys, our people do. And if you sign up for say, that's what you get. Um, so this kind of erases some of the ambiguity. And then also once the athletes get here, uh, really, that's the, the big thing is that they can actually work with the partners directly to make these deals happen. Yeah, what'll be interesting is, you know, um, if and when this happens, something like Rising Spear, which, you know, there was right. a press release for earlier in the year, the greater collaboration between folks who, you know, started that particular program that served on, you know, boards here at Florida State with the boosters and other organizations, uh, board of trustees, you know, now the greater collaboration, it's almost like there's a reunification of the powers to make sure that they're all on the same page. For example, you know, a sponsor of ours, one that's also sponsoring Florida State, Zaxby's. You know, if, I, if I'm if i Florida State and I've got to deal with, say, a Zaxby's and maybe it's for one million units, fictional units, right? Well, maybe instead, you know, Florida State takes a little bit less and, and then creates a fund because the key for, you know, I think Florida State fans that are watching this video is, we don't have as much money as a lot of our competitors, so how do we get it? Well, corporate dollars would help, and it sounds like this legislation paves the way in order to bridge that gap where you have negotiations handled by the big wigs at Florida State, and you could create another source of income. I, I think direct-to-player stuff, Ira, is still going to happen, kind of like what Gene did with Devontae sure. Taylor, and that's fine. But this is another avenue that opens up, and it strengthens Florida State recruiting, and that's got to be the bottom line as to why this is so important for the program and unfortunately the other programs in the state, but it's, it's, it, you know, so important to Florida state and, and the Seminole program and the efforts that are going here moving forward, that's got to be the bottom line for everybody, right? Is that this makes recruiting easier for Florida state. Right. And, and one little detail is that they're technically the NCAA part of the NCAA's rules was you still can't use in technically you can't use NIL deals as an incentive. So even in Texas, yeah. They couldn't say, hey, sign with us and we're guaranteeing you this amount of money. But they could work with the deals. And, and so much of you know, recruiting, like anything, is, is perception. And yeah. you don't want to be negative or recruited against. So what schools in other states could say is, hey, if you come here, we're going to work with you to set these deals up. If you're in Florida, if you go to FSU or if you go to Miami, you can't even, they can't even help you with any of these deals. Well, that, that's not a helpful that's not helping Florida State in recruiting. So, so I think there, you know, tangibly there was ways Florida State was going to work through it, like you said, Rising Spear, and they had some other things that they were doing to try to get around this. But from a perception standpoint, this will be big because now other states can't use this against them as as a, just a standard policy. Saddle up, everybody. The Wild West just got a little bit wilder in the state of Florida if things proceed as they should be. Again, uh, the partner piece from Irish Rafael is on warchant.com. Uh, if you're already there and you clicked on the video, hey, thanks. Make sure to hit the thumbs up at the bottom of this video. Subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. Tom, can uh, I have one more thing? One more point as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. This Aslan makes fun of me because I always do this. The last thing I wanted to just add is I this isn't the end of the road for NIL. And, and so what's going to happen now, this is just to try to kind of Maybe get a couple of the horses back in the barn, or as Corey likes to say, get a couple of the pieces of hay back in the barn. <laughs> this, this is uh, it, the ultimately what's going to end up happening. There's going to have to be some sort of national policy, whether that comes from the federal government or the NCAA, which doesn't seem likely, or some governing body that replaces the NCAA. Something's going to happen. Happen at some point, maybe two years down the road, maybe five years down the road. Nobody knows when, but there's going to be something in, in a FSU officials are working with national leaders at different organizations to try to get some uniform policies to, because even this isn't going to make everything uh, really totally across the board the same because there's still a lot of ambiguity, but at least this gets FSU closer on the same, uh, the state schools on the same playing field. Um, but I, this is one step in the process. I do think at some point in, in the, you know, hopefully not too distant future, there's some sort of national guidelines that kind of brings it all into the same umbrella. 
Yeah, you just want to be able to compete on something close to the same playing field in Florida, the state of, was not, and this helps Florida State. And I'm glad you interjected one more time, Ira, because now I can go with uh, one of my conspiracy theories, or, or long shot predictions is actually better. I think in a couple of years' time, Nick Saban's finally going to retire in Alabama, and perhaps he's the strong face necessary to be the czar of college football moving forward. Now, that's neither here nor there, but since you interjected, I'm going to take a, a freebie hey. and go ahead. I, my vote would be Leonard Hamilton, but I, my my guess is he's not going to want the headaches. But yeah, Saban's a good guess, buddy. Good. He he would go with my thought. With all this, has always been that you know it kind of seems like a scene out of The Godfather, and I think uh, Saban certainly looks like he could be a don of one of the families in The Godfather. Uh, I think he has the hair coloring appointments also, <laughs> like most of those dons. And Leonard doesn't put any bad food in his body. Why would he want the garbage of this particular stuff to be, you know, uh, building Fine up point. his stress levels too? Uh, but for the latest on FSU basketball, FSU football, and all things FSU, keep it right here to War Chan TV. Like and subscribe if you have not done so already. For the managing editor, Irish O'Fell, my name is Tom Lang. We will talk to you next time on War Chan TV. Be careful out there, everybody. It's the Wild West.